Welcome to this short video that's seeking to give you some hints and tips for the PRINCE2 Foundation Examination. My name's Mark Sutton, I work for Yaira Limited. I'm an accredited PRINCE2 trainer. I'm going to use some slides for this presentation and you can access those slides via the link that we give in the description that goes with this YouTube video. I'm going to spend a little bit of time just pointing out to you the recurring patterns that we find in the PRINCE2 guide and the examination syllabus rather than focusing on each individual line so that you're better prepared for the PRINCE2 foundation examination. When you get hold of that syllabus and look at it you'll see that it talks about the exam in general. It talks about the exam being a closed book examination. There are 60 questions to complete in 60 minutes. Each of those questions is worth a mark, so there are 60 marks overall, and you need to get 33 out of 60 to pass. In the examination syllabus, we also see the three different formats of question that you'll encounter in the examination. I just want to focus, though, on the fact that you need to read each question very carefully. If, like me, you have learned to speed read and read material very, very quickly, then you'll find you'll need to slow down as you're reading the questions in this exam. And I would suggest you use your pencil that you're using to answer the questions to carefully underline the key words in each question. This has two benefits. It firstly slows you down so that you're processing each individual part of the question and can see what it's asking you to tackle. But it also helps you to highlight the specific topic that the question is addressing. When we look at the syllabus, we see that it is um, divided across four different what is called learning outcomes. So four different areas. And as I've already said, I'm going to focus on recurring patterns that occur in that material rather than line by line items. So let's look at the first learning outcome. Generally, this deals with the fact that the exam is going to test your recall of important basic points about the PRINCE2 methodology. For example, do you know the structure of PRINCE2? That there are four integrated elements within it and that you understand what each of those elements are. Do you understand the characteristics of the methodology? For example, the features of a project the six aspects of project performance that need to be managed and against which tolerance values are set. And do you recognise the list of benefits that PRINCE2 offers us as we seek to do our project management work and as we seek to use it within our organisation? The second learning outcome focuses on the seven principles of PRINCE2. These are covered in detail in Chapter 3. When we look in that chapter, each of the principles, um, the explanation of each of the principles starts with a key message about that principle. And then we find definitions of key PRINCE terms scattered throughout each of the explanations of the principles. It's very important that you learn each of the key messages for each principle and those definitions of those different terms. We also see that chapter four, tailoring, adopting and adopting PRINCE2, includes some key messages as well and that there are two definitions included in that chapter and again it's important to learn those. The third learning outcome covers the seven themes. Now when we look at those theme chapters we find that each chapter has a broadly standard format. Each of the theme chapters starts with a key message and it's important to learn each of those. We also again find definitions of key PRINCE2 terms scattered across those chapters and it's important to learn those as well. Also within the theme chapters there are a number of different documents that are listed and recommended for our use. Some of them are seen as a minimum requirement of our project for our project to be considered a genuinely PRINCE2 project. These documents are what are called management products. They're there to help us to manage our project effectively. And we find them listed in Appendix A. 
In Appendix A, there's an entry about each of those documents. At the beginning of each entry for a document, there is a section that's called the purpose, which describes the purpose of that document. And we need to learn the purpose of the different documents to prepare for the examination. Each theme also specifies some minimum requirements. These are minimum requirements of the theme's expression for our project to be genuinely considered to be a Prince 2 project. When I look at the different lists of minimum requirements given each theme chapter, I can see that there are links back to the principles of which the minimum requirements are actually an expression. And it's important that I can see and recall the links between the minimum requirements and those principles. I also see that some of the minimum requirements are some of the management products or documents to which I've already referred and are listed within Appendix A. So again, it's important that I can recall the purpose of those management products or documents. Also as part of the minimum requirements, some of the themes require the project manager to produce an approach document to explain how the theme will be specifically expressed in the project. And I've listed on the slide here the five different themes and the management approach documents that are mentioned in the chapters covering those themes. However, the progress theme also has a broad equivalent to an approach document. It's not called an approach document as such, but it is a, it is a part of the project initiation document, uh, part of that section of that PID, where I am listing the controls for the project, showing how those controls help the project to progress effectively. So in, in effect, it's an equivalent to a management approach document. It's just a section of the PID. We also see that for three of the approach documents, the change control approach, the quality management approach and the risk management approach, there are some minimum requirements listed for what those documents should cover. And again, you need to be able to recall those. Also as part of minimum requirements for PRINCE2 projects, we see under the change theme, the quality theme and the risk theme, that there is an expectation that we should have registers. We should have an issue register when we think about the change theme and a risk register and a quality register for the risk and the quality themes respectively. Every one of the themes expects that there are roles and responsibilities that have been stated for the expression of any theme by anyone involved in the project. And where there is a management approach document, those roles and responsibilities are explained as a section within that document. And lastly, each of the theme expects that the project organisation structure is continuously learning from its experience. However, there are also specific theme concepts and expectations that are additionally listed in the syllabus. The organisation theme, for example, has the expectation that any project organisation structure has the three business, user and supplier project interests represented within its four levels of management. The quality theme assumes that the project has differentiated between customer quality expectations and acceptance criteria. And you too need to be clear in your own mind as to what the difference is between those two terms. When we look at the plans theme, the plans theme expects that when we are doing our product based planning, that we are prepared by knowing the sequence and which steps are mandated within the four step approach to defining and analysing products. For example, is the product breakdown structure a mandated step or is it something that is discretionary? Creating the product flow diagram, is it a mandated step or is it discretionary? And in the change theme, we are expected to understand the sequence and the scope of the recommended issue and change control procedure provided within the guide. The risk theme deals with uncertainty. 
So risk is all about what the future may or may not bring. If a situation that is giving us a difficulty on the project is already happening, that is an issue and that's covered by the change theme. Risk is about uncertainty and what may or may not occur. This uncertainty may give rise to a negative situation, in which case it's called a threat risk, or it may give rise to a positive situation, in which case it's called an opportunity risk. But these threat and opportunity risks should be recorded in the risk register of the project. And when recording them in the risk register, we need to make sure that our risk description is effective. Now the risk description should always include three elements. There should be an ex explanation of the cause of the uncertainty, what the uncertain event may be itself, and should it occur, what the consequence or effect will be for the project's objectives. So whenever describing risks in the risk register, I need to ensure that the risk description captures all three of those different elements. Make sure that you are able to distinguish them in preparation. For the examination. The progress theme strongly differentiates between two types of control. The progress theme talks about time-driven controls. These are controls that are exerted at a certain periodicity. They happen at predefined periodic intervals. And there are two controls that fall under the time-driven controls banner, the highlight report and the checkpoint report. All the other controls that PRINCE2 talks about are called event-driven controls. They occur as a result of some event in the project. So you need to be able to differentiate between those two types of controls. The last outcome, outcome 4, deals with the seven processes of PRINCE2. And when we look at the chapters that cover each of the processes, we see that each chapter has a standard opening format. There are three sections in each of those uh, process chapters. The first section in each of the chapters describes the purpose of the process. The second section lists the objectives that the process is seeking to enable the project to achieve. And the third section, the context section, places the process into the wider Prince2 process and life cycle structure. These three sections are the primary sources of material for foundation questions about processes and they are where I would focus my attention when preparing for the foundation exam. So thank you for joining me for this short uh, session, prepare, helping to be prepare you for your PRINCE2 foundation exam. Just as a reminder, you can get the slides that I've used via the link in the description that comes with this YouTube video. If you want to, please feel free to contact me for any training or consultancy that you would wish for me to provide. You'll have seen my website uh, address in the bottom right hand side of each of the slides. That's the best way to contact me. And let me lastly give you my very best wishes for your PRINCE2 Foundation exam.